intermission. Rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen for hot popcorn? Your favorite soft drinks are sparkling cold. The juicy Frank sizzling hot. There's delicious coffee freshly brewed. And all kinds of ice cream and candy to tempt you. Showtime will be announced loud and clear to get you back to your car in time. So stretch your legs. Come to the snack bar now. Typically, Tom and I like different movies. Jaws, Hugo, uh, The Artist, Moon. Sands of Iwo Jima, Shane. Love is a many splendid thing, Ben-Hur, The Ten Commandments. I usually like to come to the classic movies on Sundays and some of the children's movies. Um, I'd say <laughs> The Blues Brothers. Cool Hand Luke, another one of my favorite movies. Um, Casablanca. Uh, Shaun of the Dead. Uh, Evil Dead 2, obviously, uh, Phantom of the Paradise, um, and The Convent, believe it or not. And Tom enjoys uh, Rocky Horror and some of the more unique films. Uh, I love The Sound of Music, and believe it or not, uh, I, I love cartoons. Uh, Shaun of the Dead, Empire Records, and Hard Day's Night. Um, it's a Wonderful Life every Christmas. He also likes Monty Python, so they do show Monty Python every year. Which you can't see any other place. I love Shawshank Redemption. I love watching The Blob here at the Colonial, and people scream and holler. I love watching Rocky Horror Picture Show when they bring it back. From here to eternity, gone with the wind. Uh, Women's Prison Massacre, Killer Fish, Zombie, uh, uh, what have you done to Solange, the beyond? That's some. I'm sure there are more. We've seen White Christmas, which was great. We've seen um, Beach Blanket Bingo, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Our first date was here at the Colonial Theater, seeing the movie Moby Dick. There's just no substitute for seeing a movie. I don't care how big your TVs are getting in your home. You're in a theater. There's other people around you. People are laughing around you. People are crying around you. Sometimes people are walking out around you, but it's just you're seeing it in the big screen, the way it was meant to be seen. are now closed and we have no idea when they will reopen. That means that 70% of our income, ticket sales, has completely evaporated. We are trying mightily conti to continue to pay the salaries and health care benefits of our staff, but we won't be able to do so much longer without your help. Please consider making a donation at thecolonialtheater.com or buying a gift certificate or becoming a member. Every dollar helps. We are grateful for your support. Please stay safe. Oh, hi there. It's a pleasure to see you this evening. Just give me one more moment, if you don't mind too much. Ah, perfect. Ah, lovely to see you this evening. How are you? How's, uh, how's the family? Hope you're all staying safe out there. My name is Chuck Francisco, and I'm one of the film hosts here at the Colonial Theater. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our online watch party for this evening. Our film tonight is Penny Serenade, 
and it's a lovely Cary Grant melodrama. Uh, we know that you love Cary Grant, which is probably why we program him so often. We figured we'd extend that to our online watch party program. Uh, this film is from 1941 and is presented in rich, luxurious black and white, just like this video. It was directed by George Stevens, who you might remember from uh, men, a number of films, including Shane, A Place in the Sun, uh, The Diary of Anne Frank, and many, many more. He has an extensive directive filmography uh, with 60 films. Um, additionally, he uh, served as cinematographer on uh, almost 80 films, on 77 films. So uh, George Stevens, uh, certainly no slouch in the filmmaking department. Uh, he is best when he's given the tools to work best. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, this film stars and showcases Cary Grant and Irene Dunn together. This will be the third time that they'd worked together uh, and been paired together uh, as husband and wife on screen. So there certainly must have been something about the chemistry that they had together, uh, which really compelled audiences to demand more. Um, so this film follows their turbulent romance, uh, but it starts with their meeting and it moves through time to their romancing up to their marriage, which is rocky at some points, um, and which provides the drama for the film. Uh, but it does this in a really interesting way. It doesn't cut to something and say sometime later. It tracks the progress of time and the progress of their relationship through time by the songs being used during the film. So a number of fantastic songs from the 20s through the 40s are uh, on uh, display for the ears there, uh, and so many of them. If you are like me, a vintage swing dancing enthusiast, you'll recognize probably every single one of them. But there's something for everybody because we at the Colonial Theater care. What that means is that so many, so many of these songs are so iconic that they're baked into the American lexicon. So you've heard them somewhere. Uh, so many times during this film, you're probably going to have your ears perk up and say, ah, I know this song. And you'll find yourself later on IMDb looking at them all and trying to figure out which one was which. Um, I've got a who's who list of them. Just a couple of really notable ones to keep your ear peeled for uh, include I'm Tickled Pink, Charleston, which uh, iconically paired with the dance of the same name, My Blue Heaven, uh, These Foolish Things, Ain't We Got Fun, you Were Meant For Me, and of course, probably most famously, uh, Odd Lang Syne. So we've got a, a wonderful uh, evening of cinema for you this evening. We thank you so much for joining us and spending your time with this great community. We can't wait to welcome you back. But for now, let's all enjoy Penny Serenade. Cheers. Don't play that, Applejack. I'm leaving. Julie. Will you go down to the station and get me a ticket on the 11 o'clock? And cash that check for me? Smith will do it for you. And I'd like you to drive me to the train. Julie, you'd better think this over. I have been thinking it over, Applejack. I've been thinking about it for days. You and Roger have been married a long time. But we don't need each other anymore. Well, that happens to two people. Nothing left.
me free. Department. They're right here. How about that one up there, that book? Beethoven? Yes, yeah, the furthest one, you see. It's number seven. Hey, keep it down. <laughs> Needles? No, no. Who plays the sheet music here? I do. Oh, you do that? Mm-hmm. Oh, would you mind playing that for me, please? Why, certainly. I'll be glad to. It's a new tune. Oh, I didn't hear you. Yes, it just came in. It would be nice to dance to. It is. What's on the other side? Well, it's another new one. Would you mind playing it for me? Flower, mister. I'm going this way, honest. I'm going this way, too, honest. What's the matter? Nothing. I live here, that's all. Oh. Well, night. Good night. Oh, uh... Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Guess not. Uh, have you got a Victrola inside? <laughs> Why, yes, of course. Would you let me hear this one? Otherwise, I'll have to take it home and imagine how it sounds. Don't you have a machine at home? No. Well, why on earth did you buy 27?
talking about? That's our song they're playing. At least that's what you said when we were dancing. What are you thinking about? Oh, just wishing. Wishing I could be with you every day like this. I mean, uh, I wish every day could be a holiday like this. I mean, never have to go back home, never have to go back to work. Perfect, wouldn't it? Silly. Oh, those things are all the bunk that never come true. Go <laughs> oh, beat it. You don't like kids very much, do you? I like them all right, except when they're pests. What's it say? Hmm? <laughs> Come on. Oh, Come nothing, on. nothing. Come on, tell me. Come on. Unromantic. <laughs> Oh. I thought you said we were going to have the place to ourselves. Oh, well, just the ocean, the beach I couldn't get. Say, you're doing all right. Two or three more lessons, you'll be able to swim. You can almost float now. When your arms are holding me up. Oh, well, when you're with me, you're safe. I don't know whether it's safe or not. I'm darned if I do either. Must be getting late. Let's get dressed. Oh, now there's plenty of time. Oh, I'm thinking about that last train home. Go on, Roger. Get dressed. All right. Who phone? Besides, it's none of your business. Well, you don't have to bite my head off. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. You'd think the big lummox had phone or, or something. Well, he said he might have to go out on the story. Yeah. Julie, has he ever said anything? You know what I mean about it. said anything. Mm -hmm. No, not right out. Oh, that's what I thought. Men never say anything right out. You gotta drag it out of them. The things a man will do to keep from getting engaged. Apple oh, Jack! Hey, come on in. Yeah. Gee, let me take your things. Hey, uh, put them someplace where I can grab them fast. I, I don't belong here. Well, of course you belong here. Didn't I invite you? Come on in and be for my friend. Oh, gosh, no. Is there a drink in the house? Right off the boat. That's what the bootlegger said. You say what boat? Well, what boat would you like? We have all the labels. Come on, help yourself. You? Never use it. You know, this party might turn out all right at that. Where's Roger? Oh, I thought maybe you'd know. 
Pretty crazy about that reporter, aren't you? I'm sort of fond of him. That's bad. I hate to see a nice girl like you get mixed up with a newspaper man. Gosh, you never know what they're up to. They can get away with anything and alibi they're working. A lot of fun ducking around interviewing chorus girls and all that sort of thing. If you're single, it's swell. If you're married... Applejack, you have... listen, don't worry about me. I don't need any advice. I've never even thought about getting married. No fooling? No fooling. <laughs> well, I've been worried sick. About what? Well, I've been telling him for six months. If he didn't keep away from you, he'd find himself married. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to talk to you right away. Oh, well, hello. When did you get here? I want to talk to you. Oh, excuse me. Come right in. This is important, dear. Where can we be alone? Well, why alone? I, I'm having fun. You've been pushing me around all evening. Now put on. Julie, I'd have been here sooner only. A lot's happened. It's a fine time to come to a party just before midnight. I know, darling. I'm sorry, but I've had a million things to do. Now, wait a minute, darling. I want to get this straight. I want to tell you everything. Julie, I've had a real break. Flynn quit his job over in Tokyo. He's our Japanese correspondent. He got fed up with the assignment or the weather or something. Imagine the spot they left the paper in. Only one man in the Orient, and he walked out on a job. Oh, darling, you're cold here. Here, put this around I'm you. just excited. Here we are. You're going to take his place. Well, that's what they want me to do. I've got a ticket here for a train that leaves at 3 a.m. Gets me to San Francisco just in time to catch the next boat for Yokohama. I can't believe it yet, Julie. Imagine them picking me. Well, you're able, Roger. You have ability. Anybody can see that. You're going, huh? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, honey. It's a good salary, two-year contract, and I'm more or less my own boss. It's the kind of opportunity I've always wanted. So look, dear, I was wondering... Listen, little boy. Of course I want you to go. That's what's worrying you. Please don't think... No. I wasn't worrying about that. I knew you'd want me to take the job, sure. But... Julie, let's get married. Let's get married right away tonight. Well, I'll be there to send for you in three months. I'll have the money then. Three months? Why the rush to get married now? Well, do well, you think I'm going to let a funny little redhead like you run around loose here? Or some other fella came along and... Oh, Julie, I've got to have you. Sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death 
we was part. Till death do us part. Bye, Applejack. Bye, boy. Keep an eye on Julie for me. I sure will, boy. It's on, Doc. Take good care of her. I will. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, darling. Excuse me a minute, will you? Wait for me. All right. Come on, Roger. I can't say goodbye. Yeah, you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Not goodbye, darling. Just see you later. Anything I can do for you, boss? How soon does the train pull out? About three minutes, sir. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Not strange. Sounds great. It does sound great, doesn't it? Yes, darling. Something about a train. I, I don't know whether it's the way it looks or the way it smells or what it is. It always makes me feel I want to be off somewhere. Yeah, I know. I always feel the same way. Oh, Roger. I wish this was our honeymoon. Oh, I do too, darling. Promise me never to take it off. I'll never take it off, no matter what happens. Thank you, darling. Roger, the train's moving. I'll get you off. Expect anything like this. It's like something in a dream. He's about seven. Cook Sam or Hannah Sam? How do you do? Well, hello. 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 Hello there. <laughs> Children. The servants' children. They live here. 
I thought you didn't like children. Who, me? They're all right. <laughs> Come on in. How do you like the place? Lovely. But it's so luxurious. How can we afford it? Oh, now, don't be so practical when I'm being highly romantic. Nothing's too good for my little wife. <laughs> Can I see this? Come on. <laughs> How'd you like that, huh? Oh, darling, it's beautiful. Oh, you are sweet. But I'd have been satisfied with anything just to be here. Oh, I know you would, darling, but only the best for you. Come on, we have it upstairs to this house, too. We have a see here, too. What's a see here, too? A see here, too is the Japanese word for bedroom, believe it or not. That's right, you wrote me. It's so Japanese. Oh, yeah. Roger, it's perfect. Simply perfect. I thought you'd like it. Hello, well, Roger, are we going to keep it? I mean, stay here right along? Why, certainly, it's yours. I bought the lease from an American and went back. I got the lease, the furniture, two servants, three kids, a cat and her kids, all for 2,000 yen. 2,000 yen? Mm -hmm. How much is that? Oh, about $1,000. $1,000? That's right. How in the world do you do it? I mean, you get the money to send for me and buy all this, too. Well, I got an advance. An advance? Sure. An advance on my salary. Oh, everybody does out here. <laughs> Only the other day, a fellow down at the office was saying he wished April was here. And I said, why? And he said, well, so I can get an advance on my December salary. <laughs> oh, now, darling. You're not going to be one of those wives always worried about money, are you? Oh, no. Hmm? No, only... Besides, you forget we still got the inheritance. Yes, I know, but... Well, I sort of hate to start off in debt. Especially You've got a lot to learn about the Orient. Roger. Remember this? Oh, sure, it's one of those fortune things you got at the beach. I well, fancy you keeping that. They're not always the bunk. You said that. Did I say that? Well, well. Sometimes, like wishes, they come true. I'm well, sure they do. Certainly. Well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you write me? You don't like them. I don't like them. Well, of course I do. Why would I have three of them running around the house? And this would be our own. An American kid. Oh. Our own. Yeah. Gee, that's great. Oh, Roger. Oh, I'm so relieved. Well, you funny little redhead. Home this time of day. What makes you so beautiful, huh? Roger, how'd you get off so early? Come on, let me see you. <sighs> well, if having babies makes you look like this, we better keep on having them. <laughs> how do you like it? Oh, Roger, I adore it. But why all this today? This isn't my birthday. Oh, it's a souvenir. It's a souvenir of your stay in Japan because, darling, we're leaving. Leaving Japan? Mm hmm. Now brace yourself for good news, Mrs. Adams, because good news is what I bring. We now belong to that class of society known as the filthy rich. Roger, the inheritance. Yes. You got it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, now you see, you didn't believe me about it, did you? No, no, I didn't. Is it great? Thank you for the dolly. Thank you for the ball. Oh, that's all right. I'm teaching him to be a first baseman. Now. Paragraph two, Mr. and Mrs. Roger Adams, socially prominent young couple, plan to take a trip around the world. The paper sending you? No, I've quit the paper. 
We're going to have a last fling before we settle down and become good old American parents. But, Roger, you just didn't give up your job on the paper for no reason at all. Oh, darling, this trip's an inspiration. Do you remember the honeymoon I promised you? Well, we're going to have it. But things are different now. We've got to think about the baby. Well, that's just it. As soon as the baby comes, we won't be able to go anywhere. Besides, I want our baby born in the USA. Then we can get to work and start that little paper. Well, but a trip like this costs a fortune. Did you get more than the 20000 Oh, no, as a matter of fact, we didn't get the 20000 We sold the property for cash and got 13500 Well, can you take a trip and buy a paper and all that on 13500 Oh, don't forget to steal lawyer's fees and deductions, stuff like that. Well, just how much did you get, Roger? I'm trying to tell you. After the deductions, we got 10000 10000 mm -hmm. well, I've still got a couple of thousand in bills around here to pay. Then you really only got $8,000. Yes. What, did you ever have that much money in your life? No. Well, then what are you squawking about? I'm not squawking. I just think you're acting like a child. We should be thinking about the future. You rush in and pack up your things and give up a perfectly good job. No grown-up man should oh, act like that. all right. I thought the trip would be a lot of fun for you. If I'd known you were going to feel like that, I wouldn't have planned on it. That's all right. Let's forget it. We won't go. I'll go in and arrange for the packing. Oh, no. Forget about it. That's all. Otherwise, you'll enjoy perfect health. Be out playing tennis in a couple of months. Now, I've got some good news for you. I'm letting your husband see you today. How's that? Pretty. Make you feel better? I've had my hands full keeping that boy out of here for the last couple of days. You've been miserable not to be able to see you, honey. Well, I've had a chance to, to do some serious thinking, dear. I've been scouting around the nearby towns, trying to look for that little newspaper, you know.
No more silly ideas like traveling around, darling. You were absolutely right about that. I think I found it, honey. It's a little town just north of here, a place called Rosalia. Did you ever hear of it? Hmm. Well, it's pretty nearly the kind of place we wanted. The fellow who owned the newspaper has been kind of letting it go to seed, but we can make something of it. Best of all, darling, we'd have a home of our own. Something we can always call ours. And if I can make a go of the paper, I'll be able to get you anything you want. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be able to get you furniture, a car, clothes, everything. You know, it's strange, Roger. I can't get myself to care about those things now. They don't seem important anymore. The one thing I've really wanted, I'm never going to have. What do you think of this one, Skeeter? Quite an improvement. Gee, Mr. Adams, I'd like to get a job with a live wire outfit like this. You would? All right, Skeeter, you've got one and a permanent job, too. Oh, boy. Jack. Howdy, Big Sean. Hello, How's, fella. How's the old married man? Well, you had me worried. I thought you were going to let me down. So this is the fastest growing little newspaper in the fastest growing little town in the West. Certainly. Eh? Now, that's the bulletin for this. <laughs> what you got here? It's all new makeup. What do you think of it? What are you printing it in, code? Code? No, the linotype machine is stuck. Why do you think it's sent for you? Applejack. Miss Julie. Am I glad to see you. Come on up and help me fix the bathtub. You're just in time. Wait a minute. Let him fix this first. All right. The newspaper always comes first around here. Now, come on. 
What have you been feeding it? The switch on? Yeah. Now, where's that bathtub? I didn't know you were busy. No, I'm not busy. I've just been thinking about fixing up this old store. Yeah, I just wanted to show you a new ad we got from the telephone company. Oh. Well, that helps, doesn't it? Sure does. You know, if we keep on, we'll be able to pay the paper bill next month. Roger back yet? No, he's still out running down subscriptions. Said he might not be home until late. Oh, well, come on then. Sit down, Applejack. We might as well have our dinner. kid around this house. Thought you knew about that, Applejack. Well, sure, I know about that. But I'm talking about adopting one. Sure, you can get some pretty good ones that way. You know, I'm an adopted kid myself. I know that's not much of a recommendation, but I didn't turn out so bad. Besides, I know a lot of regular kids that wound up in jail. Miss Julie, I wish you could have seen some of those little sons of guns I used to room with. They was the cutest little rascals you'd ever want to look at. I don't think Roger would want a child that way, Applejack. One that wasn't his own. Why not? He's no sucker. He don't want to gamble. Well, how do you know what it's going to be like if it's got to be your own? This way, you just walk in and help yourself to exactly what you want, and there's no guesswork. You know, I've thought a lot about that. I want one. Roger was so disappointed when... I just haven't had the courage to... Miss see. Julie, do you want to know something? He's all for the idea. But only a few days ago, we were working together, and uh, I was talking with him, and he... You were talking to him about this? Sure. He's all for it. Well, why didn't he say something to me? Well, he was afraid to say anything to you. He, he was afraid you might have some fool notions. Silly notions? Why, if he only knew how many... What the very idea? My own husband talking about things like this with the, the printer. Press manager, please. All right, the press manager. Are you going to be the mother? No, I just thought I... I'm thing. But I get my hands on that fella. Hello, what's going on? A fight? Hello, Roger. Roger, I want you to look at that new ad. Would you come downstairs? Oh, Roger, room? wait a minute. Applejack. Why didn't you tell me? Huh? Tell you what? What you and Applejack have been talking about. Miss Julie, I told you in confidence. Mm. What were we talking about? What well, did you say to her? You know, about the... Uh, he told what? me. Told you what? Well, you know what we were talking about. The little... What were we talking about? Roger, if you wanted to adopt a baby, why didn't you talk to me? Yes, you should have told her by rights in the first place, Roger, not me. I'm not going to be the mother. Wait a minute, did... did uh... Did you tell Julie I wanted to adopt a baby? Well, I hinted at it. I tried to break it to her gently, and she... Oh, you told her? Yeah. Oh, Roger, I'm so glad you feel that way. 
Yeah, she wants it even more than you, Roger. Well, if that's the way we all feel about it. And I like it, too. I suppose it's settled. Oh, Roger, I'm so glad. If it hadn't been for Applejack letting it slip out, I don't suppose I ever would have known. Guess I'd better go fix that press. Yeah, you fix everything else, don't you? Didn't do so bad with the bathtub. Well, Julie, while I think of it... Look, now... When you get to this place, don't get enthusiastic right off the bat. You know, don't... Don't just rush in and grab the first kid you see and go nuts about it. What makes you think I'll grab the first one they show me? I've been doing the shopping in this family for some time now. I just don't bring home anything. I don't know. You came home with this tie, didn't you? Oh, it's nice. Everybody's wearing bow ties. Well. I have your letter here. Two-year-old child, blue eyes, curly hair, dimpled chin, sweet disposition. Uh, we prefer a boy. But we'd like to look at the girls, too. Oh, now, Julie, you know we agreed on a boy. Well, it won't hurt to look, will it? All right, we'll look. Now, uh, now, what can you show us? Well, this is the administration building. We don't have any children here at all. Oh. Everybody wants blue eyes, curly hair, dimples, sweet... Everybody wants a two-year-old child. Will you tell me why? Well, you see, uh, in our case, that would have been the age of our own child if... Uh... Oh. I see. Anyway, when they're two years old, they're, they're more or less housebroken then, aren't they? Well, not always. At the moment, we haven't any children available at all. There's a long waiting list. There are three applications for every child. If you get one within a year, you'll be lucky. What? A year. What? You mean to say we might have to wait a year? Well, after all, real parents wait almost a year. Well, yes, yeah, certainly, but... No, but you see, we, we've waited so long already. I know, my dear, but you're both very young. Then, too, we have to have time to make our investigation. Investigation? Yes, you see, we're just as particular about you as prospective parents as you are about the child. Oh, well, Naturally, yeah. yeah. What is your business, Mr. Adams? Mm. I'm a publisher. I run the Rosalia Courier. Publisher? Sure. I beg your pardon. Uh, Mrs. Green is on the phone. What shall I tell her? Oh, tell her that we're sorry. But according to our investigator's report, we find that Mr. Green doesn't have a steady income. Later, perhaps, if he finds himself better situated, we'll reconsider their application. You see, it's not our aim to place our children in homes of wealth, but it's absolutely necessary for us to have the assurance that the adoptive parents are financially responsible. Oh, sure. I see in your letter that you live in the country. Good. I presume that means, then, that you have a house and yard. Well, uh... No, we don't have a yard. We live in an apartment. But there's a nice park nearby. Oh, yeah, we, we got a swell roof, too. We've been putting a fence around it. And I could I could build a slide in a sandbox. Well, as a matter of fact, the roof is better, than, better for a kid, because then he can't get out in the street, you see? Look, it doesn't have to be a yard, does it? No. But you have a separate room for the child, haven't you? That's very important. Oh, sure. Oh, yes, yes, we have a lovely room. It's practically fixed up now. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, about income. Approximately, how much do you make a week? Well, I... I couldn't tell you offhand. I, I imagine about $100 a week. Of course, I'd have to look at the books. Well, that's excellent. If you'll just take that application home with you, Fill it out and mail it in to us so we'll have all the details. And then in due time, one of our investigators will call on you. Oh, fine. You, you'll call us before she comes, won't you? No. We just drop in. That's our policy. You see, we want to find your house as it really is every day, and not when it's fixed up for company. Oh, I see. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Oliver. Goodbye. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter if he hasn't got curly hair. Doesn't really matter. Hi. 
Hey, they're darn choosy, if you ask me. Why do you have to be a big shot? When? You know we don't make $100 a week. You want the baby, don't you? They can't prove it. We don't keep books. Hey, quit stalling. Get over the cleaning. Look, honey, left from the earthquake. What, Japan? We better buy some more. Excuse me, lady. You should give a fellow a warning. <laughs> Does Mrs. Adams live here? Yes, upstairs. I'll call her. No, don't bother. I miss Oliver from the orphanage. I'll find her. Uh, well, I don't think she's home just now. I, I think she's in church. In church? This time of day? Uh, well, uh, uh, you see, uh, she and Mr. Adams go there quite a lot. They just go there and sit. Fine people, the Adams. Well, I'm sure that she won't mind if I just look around a bit. No, yeah, no, she won't mind. How do you do, Miss Adams? Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Won't you sit down? Oh, here. No, thank you. You've come to see the apartment? That's right. Well, this is it. It's not very neat at the moment. We're cleaning. I see. Uh, that's our little breakfast room out there. And, uh, if you'll step right this way. This is our kitchen. My husband's been meaning to fix this door for some time, but... And uh, that brings us back to the see the breakfast room. Could I fix you a cup of tea? No, thank you. You spoke of a child's room, a lovely room. Yes, yes, that's over here. child would be lucky to have a room like this. Oh, well, I want you to see our yard. We're fixing that up, too. <laughs> well. Well, hello, Miss Oliver. Hello, Mr. Adams. I didn't expect you. I just finished making it. Thought I'd try it out, see if it was strong enough for that two-year-old. I think I have a surprise for you. A baby came in yesterday. No. Miss Oliver, you mean... Here, come and sit down. Thanks. Sit down. That's the reason that we came around to see you sooner than we expected. Yeah. It's a little girl. Well, we don't want a girl. Five weeks and three days old. Five weeks? 
Well, uh, we did speak of an older child, you know. You might have to wait a long time. After all, aren't you making too great a point of the child's age, Mr. Adams? Eventually, this child will be two years old. But we don't know anything about such little babies. <laughs> well, no one does until they have them. And this is such an unusual little baby. Actually, there's another couple who has first choice. Now, that's strictly off the record. But somehow, I feel she's exactly the child for you. That's why I wanted you to see her first, and I couldn't resist giving you the chance. Did you bring her with you? Oh, no, she's in the nursery. You and Mr. Adams will have to come over to the city to see her. What's she like, Miss Oliver? Well, I can't describe her exactly, but she's... Well, she's like no other child. Like no other child. But she isn't a boy. But look, Roger, there's no harm in looking at her. If you don't like her, I won't say a word. Well, what's the use? We don't want her. That's fine. You call me up and I'll make an appointment at the nursery. I must go now. No. Oh, I think it's a good idea. If you uh, change your mind, you will call me up, won't you? Uh, yes, yes. Miss Oliver, uh, please don't show her to that other couple until we've seen her with. I won't, my dear. She's like no other child. That's why I wanted you to see her first. Like no other child. Well, how about him? This is a day nursery. All these youngsters have parents. All except this lovely little girl. Kid. Well, uh, you've had your look, dear. How about going back home? Oh, well, she's yours, I guess. When do we get her? Now, if you like. She's yours on a year's yeah. probation. No? You mean we can just walk out of here with her like this? It sometimes happens that way. If we make sure that the parents and the baby are just right for each other. Well... well we have no clothes for her, we don't know how to feed her. Such a little baby. Well, Miss Morgan will take care of everything. She'll give you the formula and so forth, and then you can go downtown and buy whatever's necessary.
Thank you, Miss Oliver, for being so kind. Oh, don't thank me. It just happened so. Perhaps before you make up your minds fully to take the child, you'd like to have me go into her history. I can assure you it's an excellent one. If she'll take a chance on us, we'll take a chance on her. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Oliver. wakes up again, you know what that means. Wait a minute. Wait for that baby while I turn on the light, otherwise you'll drop him. I mean her. Let's go to bed. Oh, no. I don't think I'll go to bed. She eats again in a half hour. Directions say so.
what's the matter with it? I don't know. Do you think she's all right? Huh? Is it breathing? She's certainly a good little baby, isn't she? We were lucky to get her. Let's go to bed. Do something, quickly. I do. But, but do something. Can't you see the baby suffering? Oh, I just did. I don't know what to do. Oh, oh no, don't just stand there. Do something. Hmm? You do something. It's all over. Just wanted her daddy. Move the chair, please.
The baby! It's gone! The baby's kidnapped! Lonesome, so I brought him here with us. Don't ever do that to me again. Morning, boys. trying to do? What am I trying to do? Well, I'm trying to get your crummy paper out. That's what I'm trying to do. What's the idea of waking the baby up? What baby? My baby. Your baby? Yeah. Came last night. No fooling a baby? Yeah. What are you, baby? Now, come on, I'll show it to you. Can I help? Sure you don't want me to help? No, thanks. Matter. Nothing's a matter. What's the trouble? I can't do anything as long as you're sitting around here watching me. Get out. Go on, get out, all of you. What do you think this oh, is? Come on now, get out that paper and be quiet about it. I don't know how to bathe. I'm afraid I'll drown. Oh, no, darling. No, no. Take it easy. No. I could drown in that much water. Oh, Here. Cheer up. Now, 
Bring your feet up. Your Uncle Applejack's gonna give you a nice bath. Give me that wash rag. Huh? Oh, Roger, I'll never be able to do that. We'll have to give her back. <laughs> sure you will. I'll tell you, baby, darling. All you got to do is decide who's boss, you're it. How the world did you ever learn to do that, Applejack? Her sister had four kids. She took two and I take two. Think you can hold this a minute without dropping it? Oh, sure. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Here, give it here. Oh, yes, yes. I, I forget what it is. Now, watch this closely. I'm a one pin man myself. Jump right in there, Peanut. You go to your mama. Oh. Hey, you better write all that down because I might get a better offer. Oliver. How you do, Miss Adams? Come in. Thank you so much for letting us know you were coming this time. Hello, Miss Oliver. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Adams? Trina, this is your fairy godmother, Miss Oliver. Say hello, hmm? sweetheart. Yes, yeah, she's not very timid, <laughs> is she? <laughs> I can plainly see that she adores her father. She means everything to us. Oh, she might have got a cold. Yes, you do. Everything. When are we going to get to own her outright? 
You go before the judge, the 27th. 27th, huh? You'll want to see these charts, I suppose. I... Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One you can send back to us. And the other you'll file with the court, uh, at the court with the final papers. Uh -huh. These are the same questions that you answered last year. We just want to bring them up to date. Now, let's see. Religion? Same. Age? One year older. <laughs> I have that. Profession? Still publisher, isn't it? Yes. Income? Income? Well, you see, Miss Oliver... Uh... None. That's the way it is in the newspaper game, Miss Oliver. Especially when you're starting one of your own. You have to close down once before you really get going. Ah, uh, it's only temporary. I'm having a jam in my wholesale paper mill. First thing you know, I'll have it humming by the 27th. Only close for a while. I'm sure you'll find a way, Mr. Adams. You and I have to prove to the judge that your income is enough to take care of Trina. You know we'd give Trina everything she needed, Miss Oliver, no matter who else had to suffer around here. I realize that. <laughs> well, I must go now. That's all we can do today. Uh, could, I, could I drive into the train? No, thank you. I really like to walk. This country air is so fresh. Goodbye. Bad Lex. She doesn't want us to have Trina. Yes, she does, darling. Oh, yes, she does.
opportunity to better prepare your facts. Option proceed. The Adams case. What? The Adams case. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And if either one or both of you gentlemen conduct yourselves like you've been doing today, I'll hold you in contempt. The both of you. This is a charming question. <clears throat> Let me think. Uh, yes, I see. <clears throat> In looking over these adoption papers here, I see that you have no income at present. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. What is this, Miss Oliver? You know, this case should never have come before me. Well, Your Honor, I feel that this is a special case. I kept hoping until the last minute that Mr. Adams might be able to resume the operation of his paper or get a job. But, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to do either, so I thought... Well, under these mm -hmm. conditions, I cannot grant the adoption. And this child will have to revert to the orphanage. Will you draw up a chair, please, while I prepare these release papers for you to sign? Oh, it's just a matter of routine. If you please, Your Honor, it can't just be a matter of routine for people to have their baby taken away from them. This child is our, ours, Judge. Yeah, those are the requirements of the law. Yes, but you see, we've had her since she was six weeks old. It just doesn't seem reasonable that we should have to give her back now to, to, to strangers. Uh, Mr. Adams, uh, you're not here to plead your case. You've had the regular opportunity to prove your fitness to provide. We are fit, Judge, if you just look at the record. Without any income, I have no alternative. Uh, didn't you make that clear, Miss Oliver? Yes, Your Honor, I did. But I thought... I'm we... sorry, but that is the law. Your Honor, she's not like an automobile or a nice box or a piece of furniture or something you buy on time, and then when you can't keep up the payments, they take it away from you? Mm. Now sit still and be a good girl. Anyone can give up those kind of things. But I ask you, Judge, how can you give up your own child? And she is our child just as much as if she'd been born to us. Mm. No, no, Daddy's not going to go away, dear. Look, Judge. We've had her over a year now. Why, we, we've walked the floor with her when she had the colic. We've lost nights of sleep worrying every time she cut a tooth. We've gone through everything. Everything that real parents have is one of their own. That's Miss Oliver here about the inspections we've had to have. Her, her weight charts, her vaccination certificates, her, her toys, her dresses, her toothbrush. They come around regularly and check up on all those things to see if we're taking care of her properly. How many real parents could keep one of their own and go through that? And you sit there and say it's a matter of routine for you to take her away from us. Please, Mr. Adams. I'm sorry, Judge. But... Well, you see, we weren't as fortunate as most people. We'd have had one of our own, only I... Well, you don't know how badly, badly my wife wanted a child. It wasn't so important to me. I, I don't know, I suppose most men are like this, but children never meant a great deal to me. Oh, I like them all right, I suppose, but... Well, what I'm trying to say is, Your Honor, the first time I saw her, she looked so little and helpless. I didn't know babies were so, so little. 
And then when she took hold of my finger and held on to it, she, she just sort of walked into my heart, Judge, and, and she was there to stay. I didn't know I could feel like that. I'd always been, well, kind of careless and irresponsible. I wanted to be a big shot. I couldn't work for anybody. I had to be my own boss, that sort of thing. Now, here I am, standing in front of a judge, pleading for just a little longer so that I can prove to you I can support a little child that doesn't weigh quite 20 pounds. It's not only for my wife and me I'm asking you to let us keep her judge. It's for her sake, too. She doesn't know any parents but us. She wouldn't know what had happened to her. You see, there's so many little things about her that nobody would understand her the way Julie and I do. We love her, Judge. Please don't take her away from us. Look, I'm not a big shot now. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll work for anybody. I'll, I'll bank. I'll borrow. I'll, please, Judge. I'll, I'll sell anything I've got until I get going again. Well, she'll never go hungry. She'll never be without clothes. Not as long as I've got two good hands to help me. She's yours, dear. Oh, no. Now and forever. Oh, oh Trina. Yeah. Nothing can ever take her from us now. Daddy, Mommy will be home any minute now. Yeah. Well, look, dear, you go and watch for her. Let me know when she comes, huh? How's it getting along, Apple Jay? Ain't she a beauty? Mm. Oh, it's Here good. she comes. Well, now? Well, let's get the presents, quick. Like it, darling. 
And this is from Uncle Applejack. Uncle Applejack? Oh, I think I can guess what this is. It's a oh, it. oh, it's beautiful, Applejack. I always figure a person can't have too many handkerchiefs. Thank you. Thank you. And this is from me. From you? Imagine what this is. I got you a record because you love records. And because you and Daddy love each other so much. Oh, Trina, that's sweet, darling. Thank you. Come on, let's play it. See how it goes. Dinner's ready. Come and get it or I'll throw it in the creek. Dinner in my own home, and I didn't have to cook it. <laughs> well. Ooh. Well, we sure changed the complexion of that bird. <laughs> we certainly did. What'd you do in school today, darling? Well, I almost forgot I was choose. I'm going to be in the Christmas play. In the Christmas play? What are you going to do? I'm going to sing in the carols. Uh-huh. Well, Trina, that's wonderful. It'll be fun making you a carolers costume. I don't need any costume. Nobody sees me. Nobody sees you? All I have to wear is a clean dress and some sneakers. I'm the Echo. I'm way off behind the scenes. You only hear my voice. Miss Hopkins says it gives a faraway sound, like angels in heaven. Oh. Well, why do you have to wear the sneakers? The sneakers is so I'll be quiet. I have to walk up in the sky behind a cloud and take a big star with me. Then when I get over the manger, I stop. And then the angels sing. And when my turn comes, I sing the echo. Then I sneak off quietly. And next year, when I'm big, I get to be an angel and wear an angel suit. I'll get seen then. Of course you'll get seen then, darling. This is a long time until next year, Daddy. Oh, no, darling. We'll be here in no time at all. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my, what happened to the lights? Shh. Did you see the lights go out? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs>
spoiled everything. Now Miss Hopkins won't let me be an angel next year. Yes, she will, darling. Certainly. Yes, I was talking to her. She said you did fine. Sure. Well, you were better than all the rest of them put together. See? Honest? Honest. Gee, I don't know what people do without Christmas. Oh, I don't know what we'd do without you, honey. Would you please stop that door from banging? I wish you wouldn't go out. I've got to get out of here, get some fresh air. Isn't that someone downstairs? Mm -hmm. 
someone at the front door. Your phone, please. Our car stalled, and I'd like to call a taxi. Yes, it's right here on the desk if you'll just walk around that way. Thank you. I saw your light burning, and we're in such a hurry. Cabs are always busy on a night like this. Hope we can get one. Tommy's in the Christmas play. I hope we don't get late, Mommy. Our car's right out in front. I'll drive you over if you like. Oh, that's very kind of you, but wouldn't be too much trouble. It's not too much trouble. Come, dear. You can't start the car. The battery's dead. I'll have to crank it. Thank you enough. If you only knew what these things mean to a child. Let's get out of here. What's the matter? Take the car on home. Roger. I'm not coming home. I don't ever want to see anything or anyone that reminds me. All right. Goodbye. songs kind of take you back, don't they? Yes, they do take you back. Did you decide which ones you're going to keep and which ones you're going to leave for him? 
funny, Applejack. I, I can't seem to divide them. They belong to both of us. Guess I'll just leave them. Well, while I was listening downstairs there, I, I could remember just as clear the first time I ever saw you. Roger brought you into the bulletin that I was cussing and pounding that old machine. Gee, you didn't know we was all going to get to know each other so well then, did you? Could you get the rest of the things out of the bedroom for me, please? Julie. I don't blame you at all. You should leave me. Why don't you say it, honey? It's all true. I haven't done any one of the big things I plan to do for you. But right where we started, I'm still struggling. I've let you down all around, honey. Well, all I needed to make it 100% was for you to leave me. And I can't think of a reason in the world for you not to. I'm licked, Julie. You're not licked, Roger. It's just us. We're licked as far as our being together is concerned. And something really came along that hit us hard enough we couldn't face it together. I needed you an awful lot these last few days. But you've been miles away. I've been entirely alone. Right here in this room with you. I know, dear. I wish I could do something to help you, too. It just hasn't worked out. Oh, it did work out, Jilly. Things were wonderful until this happened to us. I don't know. I just haven't, been, just haven't been able to think straight the last few days. She was never sick before, and then... And all of a sudden, it was all over. If there was only some way that people could know a few days ahead what was going to happen. Yeah. Well, the day before she was taken sick, she asked me for a quarter, and I, I wouldn't let her have it. And she asked me to take her to the movies, and I said, no, run along, I'm too busy. I know. It was the same with me. <laughs> I was trying on her angel costume, and... She was so excited she couldn't stand still. I scolded her. I said, I'll never try another dress on you again. I never did. Yeah. Hello. Miss Oliver. It's a very strange thing, Mrs. Adams, but we have a little boy who is just two years old. Well, it's the oddest thing. He's the exact image of the youngster you asked for when you first wrote to me. You remember? I have that old letter here in front of me now. Curly hair, 
blue eyes, dimples, and this is strictly off the record, for really, another couple has the right to see him first, but he's such a remarkable baby that I thought perhaps you and Mr. Adams might take a look. Oliver, please don't let that other couple see him until we do win. I won't, my dear. Goodbye. Two years old, I'd better, better drop the kid again, hadn't I? Yes. I wouldn't want the little fella falling down the stairs and breaking his arm. Oh, I guess we'd better get out the crib. Then if he's two years old, he can sleep in this bed, Cody. Oh, sure, sure. And we won't have to put the chairs around. And over in that corner, I could, I could put a little electric train. <laughs> Love that film.